Make or break. Make it yours. Welcome back to the State Farm Analyst Desk for game number seven of the day. This is a big one because both teams here, Unicorns <laughs> of Love and Beyond, enter at 0-2. So really, Kaizen, the stakes here are high, as we've talked about before, with teams that are winless still, as it's only a single round robin, and you've got to make sure you pick up one or two to push yourself to the next stage. Absolutely, and you know, if you lose this game, you, you, you started seeding the the fate of your world run to the gods right it's not within your control anymore uh and what i would like to see from both of these teams is them to sort of just reset back to basics play your style with uol it needs to be around playing around no man's you know obviously he's going to get focused in draft with the casting and bands and you know things like this but there should be other picks that allow him to have agency we've seen a lot of silas aurelia's occasionally up and that could be a good pick for him and then on the side of beyond it's back to Go duty. It's about getting this guy online as quickly as possible. It, it's interesting, really, between these two teams because I, I feel like at this point there's there's two different styles that sets on between them. When I look at Beyond, I'm looking at Doggo. When we've mentioned Doggo a lot, I'm sure all you guys already know out there that it's Doggo, Doggo, Doggo for this team. <laughs> but that wait, might, who is it? Doggo. Oh, okay. You, it was Doggo. I got it. Good. Doggo, what? Shut up. All right, because. <laughs> <laughs> At this site now, for Beyond Gaming, I'm lacking the solo laners. Like, we're talking about No Man's, we can talk about Boss and Unicorns of Love, they have shown up, but I'm lacking the solo lane present coming through from Liang. We were so close to see it in the game against Cloud9, with Liang finally showing up on Alilia, with Mao and uh, with the, um, the Yone in the mid lane as well, almost having these pop up performances, but it's just lacking. But the thing is, on the other side of the coin, coin rather, with Unicorns of Love, <laughs> it's, it's the bot lane that we're missing, right? It's Argonov that's not really showing up, so we have these two different stylistic in, in, in terms of like who's performing right now on the team. And I think both teams so far haven't had a full unit show up and really display that team play. Well, a massive contrast in that way. But I guess then, Kaizen, it does really come down to uh, the idea of which of these teams' current weaknesses is going to shore up and actually show up here on the Rift in this one. Yeah, and I, I think it's more beyond. I think beyond, you know, they had some individual issues, and I think uh, draft, drafting the Graves early, I think kind of put them in a weird spot where they needed to flex a little atop, and I don't I didn't love that. Um, and even for Leong, I hear what Goldberg is saying in terms of he needs to step up, but I think when we look at the situation he was in where he was playing Lilia into Malphi, and he kind of had lane priority, and then his jungler took a fight, and they weren't on the same page. These are very fixable mistakes that you can, re you can resolve in the hour that they've had to, to review the footage. So I'm less worried about Beyond, and I'm more worried about uh, the ability for UOL to be able to play through lanes other than mid. All right, well, it's another all-important matchup here in Group B between Beyond Gaming and Unicorns of Love. We're going to hand it right back over to Pastry Time and Mark Z for the call. Thank you very much, Dash. Uh, we have the Bagel Boys here, Mark. It is the 04 Club down here right now in Group B, but thankfully the fortunes will change here in this match. He has some, some mean nicknames, the Bagel Club. <laughs> oh, brutal. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tough spot for both these teams to be in. It feels like their backs are against the wall here. Um, I'm pretty sure this is not an elimination game with how heads heads work in, in the round robin portion here. So your, your hopes are always alive that mm -hmm. you can then meet them again at one and three and get a tiebreaker, but it is still a really tough position to be in, especially, I think, for the side of Beyond coming off of a loss that was, was pretty rough against C9, you know, whereas at least UOL, this is their first game of the day. They're a little, little bit more hopefully settled and, and prepared, and they also were, had the ability to watch Beyond earlier in the day. Yeah, and again, it, it's tough in this, you know, very condensed format, right? Because on the one hand, uh, gauging team strength is, is pretty tricky because uh, with the obvious outliers, you know, as you kind of said, like, Teams will typically meet in the middle as far as their strength goes, right? Because you're just going to have good games and bad games sometimes. It's very hard to be super good all the time unless, you know, maybe LNG, who are obviously looking pretty good yeah. over in Group A. Um, and you do have time to, you know, between days to kind of adapt and think and study your opponents a bit more and practice a bit more, but you don't have very much time to implement those adjustments, right? It's not like you have a week to practice on something and, and really figure it out. So definitely you have to do a lot of work in a very short space of time, but if there's ever a time to start that work, it is certainly now here as the draft is underway. Cassid and Camille Aurelia banned away by Beyond, and it is Aphelios, Lucian, and Rise banned away as Zin Zhao, interestingly, is going to be the first pick here.
who shot wanting that jungle at nice and early. Yeah, Zin, priority, interesting to see. Uh, haven't seen it out of an Anasik yet, but uh, maybe just something that Husha wants, you know. <laughs> Wants something a little bit more stable, a bit more normal in the meta after the Graves in the previous game. Um, Zin is a very powerful pick, so no surprise to see it there. But it does, as I was about to say, leave up the MF, uh, which is seemingly the highest priority, or one of the highest priority champions. Yeah, I think uh, she's one of the few 100% presence champions so far in Worlds. Obviously, not a huge sample size, but... Uh we're starting to get through a pretty decent number of games. Eight games a day gives you a pretty high sample size, yeah. even though you know, you're know you not ultimately playing that many games over the course of an entire tournament. But MF has definitely been a staple. He's going to be picked up here. And there's Lee Sin. Looks like nice and cozy there for Ananasik. Yep, there you go. Uh, that is one of his signature champions, Lee Sin. Great playmaker. So in for a treat potentially here. And uh, on the point about the, the AD carry and stuff, this is a lot of Doggo focus with the double bands as well as the, the MF takeaway. The Ezreal is still up, and Doggo's Ezreal is clean. Do not get me wrong, but I, I feel like it's sometimes hard to make things happen around the Ezreal. It, uh, a lot of the times, you're then sending your support out to go do other things. Right. And, you know, for such a key factor in Beyond Success to kind of be on weak side Q farm duty potentially is is a little tough. Even if later in the game there's a ton of care potential. I mean, we saw Def hard carry some games yep. uh, on the, it as well. I mean, even in the last game, right, Zven? Looking pretty comfy on it. True. Definitely his only early game, though, was to, like, don't die and let uh, Vulcan roam. So I'm imagining Kino here in the Rakan is going to be similarly unlocked, which is good. It's just, can you survive the, you know, the <laughs> elongated 2v1 potentially? Well, I was just thinking, too, like, I wonder if Kino after the last game was like, give me a champion with some self peel. Like, I need to be able I need to mobility. Yeah, I played a Moomoo, and they just hard targeted me. I played Gray Screen Simulator last game. I want to not do that. And also, Silas is making another appearance there for the Man's been a pretty popular pick so far. See how No Man's looks on it. Of course, we know how critical he is to the UOL success in general. Definitely a veteran of the uh, international and, and definitely the playing stage. UOL have been here a number of times, one of the most experienced teams, and No Man's no exception here. In fact, this whole top side really has been a staple of Unicorns of Love for a long time now. Uh, but unfortunately, no Mumu to kind of get away with one <laughs> yeah, with the Silas, uh, but still some, some decent holes to steal. Silas. Often is not, you know, uh, denied of targets. There's almost always one or two ultis. Yeah, Rakan, great for helping you get some in there and a little bit of extra CC and all this stuff. So we'll see if they are able to grab a couple more good ones. Um, and taking it blind, you know, strong enough in the current meta, you, you can probably get away with it. And plus, you can target ban some of those counter picks that you don't want to play against. Like last game, we saw Mountain play the Yone. So this is one of those data points that I was saying it's good to be able to get before you have to play against them. You say, okay, well, the Silas looked really good into them. We'll take Silas and we'll ban the thing that they played into it. Yeah, I like the Yone, but uh, as you said, won't be available here. As uh, Amumu actually banned away, wanting to respect uh, giving Amumu MF over. That has been the most typical combination. Uh, even though, again, Amumu is, I'm um, sorry to report, 0 4. I knew, so I knew you were going to bring it up. I was like, am I going to bring it up? Are you going to bring it up? We were looking at each other like, who wants to. Who wants to deliver those Dude, He's news? a sad boy, and he, yeah. he's like, I'm finally back on the international stage. I'm finally relevant again. Talk about Bagel Club, but Amumu with that Bagel Club too. Yeah, he's, uh, he's the president right now. <laughs> he's the leader of the Bagel Club. Yeah, we choose the hands up for once. Uh, it's eating pretty those good. zeros. <laughs> oh, Lord. Ari as well banned away. Definitely a no man's champ, but uh, one that basically every mid laner is comfortable with. And I think in this kind of game, especially peeling away a comfort pick isn't too bad. Galio also getting banned away as a potential support option there for Santas. But the pick is Nautilus by the looks of things. Do need to lock down the Rakan. Leona also an option, but I think either of these would make a lot of sense. Yeah, and it helps with your pushing power too. I mean, if you can rip tide the wave, land an E on it with the MF, I mean, you, you can get some push pretty quickly. Um, the Jax blind would be surprising. I see. I'm here for it. We'll see if he does want to lock it in here. Leong has played a pretty widespread of champions so far here in play, but it is Syndra instead there locked in. Still have opportunity for Jack's blind, don't worry. Uh, but Leon nah. maybe wants something a little more stable. Yeah, I, w I would probably not want to see it yeah. right out the gate. It feels like a, a pretty big call out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Jace as well, though, similarly uh, trying to play a pretty aggressive style. And I think, you know, that is kind of the identity that Leon brings uh, through Summer Split. You know, six games Camille, four games Gwen, four games Jace. A lot of aggressive champions, a lot of carry focus. Um, and just a little bit safer of an option than the Jax. But it helps, you know give you a power point on the map. The Syndra as well gives you a very strong topside. Decent damage spread as well between those two soul laners. So uh, we'll have to see what boss can break out to match this. I think when you're, uh, when you're drafting as well, you definitely need power in your soul lane. So I do like that uh, Beyond's approach to this in general. 
Last pick though for Unicorns of Love is Wukong. Going to be the Ooh. counter pick there in today's. Definitely not uh, a fun time in the early levels, which is basically true of any Jace matchup, but uh, once you get things going, once you hit level six, it can be a bad time there for Jace. I mean, anyone who watched the LCS during the yeah. remote broadcast <laughs> should know how much of a Wukong fan that I am. Uh, I took every opportunity I could to replace my face cam with a picture of Wukong. <laughs> so I'm, I'm stoked to see Boss break it out. I, I think the champ is so good into uh, Jace, you know, despite some of the nerfs that come in since the height of his power. And, you know, we're talking about the power point that Liang's going to bring with Jace. That's, like you said, true for a couple levels, and then suddenly, Anana 6 is going to have a great lane to try and make plays through. It's a very easy setup. The Silas as well can potentially roam up there, um, and that, that's a potential place that they can go to, given that they have that, uh, you know, it's kind of tough probably to make plays against the, the Ezreal on the bot side. Yeah, in general, it feels like this is going to be a uh, top side game for both these teams. Unicorns of Love almost always wants to enable No Man's, although No Man's' job might be enable his top lane in this particular game. Silas typically most happy when he's in the river. I uh, haven't seen the full commitment yet to the River Silas, but uh, the more times you can get out of lane, the better. Actually, I guess Perk's joked about it. Said he yeah. played River Silas in their first game. <laughs> yeah, I think No Man's is someone who I, I want to see step up a little bit. Like you said about how familiar some of these names are to us, he has been a staple of play-in and, and minor regions and one of the best mid laners, but not super impressive so far during this play-in. The first game where he was the Orianna, I think that was the first one, but the Orianna game where he was really greedy with his flash, he was dying to just not respecting his opponents and, and getting caught in side lanes and stuff it was it was a bit of a problem and something that i think you has struggled with a little bit even domestically uh when the playoffs came around and they were struggling t through the entire bracket taking a lot of five game series was just getting caught out in map situations and not respecting where the enemy could be or if teleports were up and stuff and i think that's what they need to clean up the most in helping no man's get unlocked to make his own plays yeah and definitely have to be careful here because you have not only a syndra and a zinzao to maybe contend with but very likely if things are going well kino is going to be in your lane sometimes as well so Gonna have to be respectful there on the Silas. We'll see what happens as both teams have charged out at level one. But unfortunately, not met anything there. Unicorns Love were trying something in the top side, but I believe Liang spotted what's going on, cut the board down into the top lane. So uh, everything just dissipates. But a good try. Always love to see the teams go for level one, especially when you have something as straightforward as a Nautilus. Silas also excellent at level one as well. So we're keeping it simple here for Unicorns Love, but not overcommitting, of course. And I feel like. The thing I'll want to see is exactly what Husha can do in the early game with the should-be pressure in both solo lanes to start out. Uh, this is the case in the last game against C9, and he got caught out of position on a Krug invade. And so I don't want him to lose that aggressive mindset. I feel like that's sometimes people overcorrect, um, and they don't go for what their comp should be doing in the early game. And I, I hope to see him still making those kinds of plays, just coordinating a little bit better around those solo lanes. Well, no man's big chilling right now. Doesn't want to face check the Syndra, makes sense. Not much for you to do, range versus melee. So might as well sit around and wait for the minions to get a bit weaker. 2v2 here should be interesting. Definitely have to tip the hat to Unicorns of Love. Ooh, it's the ruined MF. Ooh, lore. <laughs> so fancy. Also have exhaust and ignite there in the bottom side. Kind of down for the exhaust here for MF, because again, like, so much of her problem is when people jump on top of her, so. A little bit easier for you to deflect people if Jace or Zinzel perhaps are getting on top of you. And also just good in like, even in a 2v2, if you're looking to chase somebody down, shoot them in the back, double them up. I'm it is interesting. It. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around it a little bit because there's not that much dive on the side of Beyond Gaming. You have Zin, who's yep. probably realistically. Ezreal's going to be hitting you from afar. Jace, Shock Blast. You know, Singe is a pretty low commitment champion to get a burst out. So... How often are you going to be really in range? Because my concern is being at half health and then insta-killed, not 100 to 0, which is where the exhaust would make the most sense. So a little unsure of how I, I feel about that when I want to see it play out a little bit more, but not loving it and my initial impression. And like you said, topside, the Wukong counter pick takes a little bit to turn on. Uh, it's definitely not like a, I'm going to turbo stomp you in lane. It is, I get pushed in the first couple of levels, um, but my passive enables me to eventually, when I hit three, be able to start trading against you, even the lane out a little bit. And then at six, I get kill threat once I unlock my ultimate. And I also give you really good playing making around me. So if you have TFs or uh, Lee Sins and things and Silas's that can get out of lane and come topside, you suddenly have someone who you can pick on quite hard. Love a little stun there from Syndra in the mid lane, but looks like Husha was just protecting the Syndra in case uh, somebody wanted to come visit. That would, of course, be Ananasik, as we do have uh, a little dial in here from the Verizon 5G all chat. From, uh, oh, what's our duo name? 
I'll be honest. I'm not a very good name, like creative nickname person. That mm -hmm. my name is Mark Z. It's my it's my goddamn name. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not the one to answer that question. Sorry, friend. All right. You know what? I'll have a think on it here. It looks like trouble in bottom side here for Misfortune getting ignited, but is not dead. Gonna be all right there, but uh, looking a little tricksy. There nice in the two v one. Yeah, nice though to get that chunk out early on. I mean, we talked about. You know, being weak side for Doggo and Kino, but I mean, if you're able to do that, start getting priority in the lane, uh, you can actually force a couple plays. Uh, the MF is immobile. He, she does have the exhaust, so maybe it'll make it more difficult, but sometimes I think I'd rather have the heal to dodge Sindra's skill shots and stuff. So we'll have to see. I can only imagine how angry Kino is after, you know, the uh, the Mumu game. We have to endure Ooh. beating after beating from Cloud9, as uh, Ananasic did successfully steal the large Raptor. And will not be punished for it. Just walks away there with a little bit of coverage out of Nomads. Top side boss. Getting smacked around. Conqueror proc and Leung. Feeling good in the extended trade. So boss will not recommit. Yep. Uh, gonna drop off there. Looks like he wants to get a little, a couple wards. I mean, luckily they just saw the Lee Sin, but, or excuse me, they just saw the, the Zin punishing the Lee Sin. So he knows that the dive's not coming in quite yet, but that is still something you have to be concerned of. Instead, Husha looking to the bot side to punish. Misfortune looking like a decent target. Exhausto up and available. Who is it going to be? Kino dives in, and that is going to be Misfortune flashing to her death. It's first blood for Doggo. Love to see it there for Beyond as uh, the power shot does happen, and now the redub is indeed coming through. Who shall low the heal, though, is going to uh -oh. save him. Doggo uh -oh. trying to tank it up, and it looks a little bit disastrous as oh, no one one will fall under the tower. <laughs> and that execution is not even a real kill. So now it's Nomads trying to get them on the board here as Doggo is going to be the target, but Kino running into Experience. Husha flashing, Kino out of there, and they've done it beyond gaming! 1-0, don't forget anything else that happened, don't worry about it! Close your eyes, look at the scoreboard! Clean. <laughs> clean, clean bot dive from beyond there! Oh boy, uh, a lot of things to break down there. Um, not saying that the heal would have made the difference, but one of the things that uh, exhaust doesn't help a ton with is, okay, guy goes in and grabs turn aggro, I exhaust him, great, makes it a little bit harder for him to get out maybe, but there's three other targets hitting me, and exhaust doesn't do anything to those people. Uh, so you still see Argonaut getting dropped there. The redive, Santos did a good job, nice footwork work, also had his shield, um, as you'll see here. Uh, Husha starts this one off, goes in right away, and then the exhaust goes right down top of him. It's actually uh, Kino who grabbed Terry Aggro first. Good job of juggling that to get the initial kill and stay healthy enough for the redive. All things considered, the initial phase of this dive went very well. It's only on the redive that things get a little loosey-goosey, where here it's really on Moan to finish this kill off. Everyone else is kind of low. Maybe Kino could have stayed in a little bit more, but misses the Q. You know, the auto attacks aren't enough to break the shield. The extra shield from Anonasic coming in, making sure Santa stays alive. The only problem is no one tagged him. <laughs> so, needed an E there from Anonasic or something. I, didn't, I don't know if, it, if it, I, he just assumed someone else already tagged him, or I, I'm not quite sure, but uh, you know, I was happy to just get the shield off, and so what could have been a nice turnaround for UL actually doesn't give them any gold. Yeah, actually, and because the roam happened as well from Nomads, you don't even get like, necessarily a CS lead, or you get some terror plates in mid lane or anything. Yeah, and instead it's one kill and actually a very big early lead. 1,200 gold is a lot at seven minutes in the game, and that is the current lead that Beyond's have. Yeah, and it, you know, it's also the, the CS lead in the top side that the Jace is just naturally going to accrue through the laning phase. The fact that the junglers have been seen for so long and there's been so much action on the bot side is actually great for the Jace to just keep that push up. Um, you know, like we said, it takes a little bit for that threat to come in, and now that there's so many cooldowns kind of burn, the Jace doesn't, or the, excuse me, the Lee Sin doesn't have his flash and stuff, it, it makes the Jace feel a little safer, even though he's not really involved in any these plays going down. Alrighty, well, see how it develops, but uh, they apparently did not like our suggestion of playing the weak side 2v2. Doggo and Kino are all in on getting aggressive here in this lane, which I'm very happy about. Doggo playing up nice and far forward. Definitely the uh, the lesser seen mode of Ezreal, but still one you can play if you have well, an initiative in the lane. Yeah, I feel like this is how you should play League, is you have to be adaptable to what's happening in the game. And, and Jace is totally happy with extended, uninteractive laning phases where he just gets CS lead. So if your bot lane is forcing summoners on their own and setting up dives, like, great. Flip that a little bit. You know, as long as you can protect Leong from the dives and you just let him get the push when he can, like, you know, you're fine snowballing uh, Doggo, who, by the way, like we said, the carry for Beyond Gaming over the course of their season. All right, well, Ananasik is spotted. Nice little vision ward there. Or control ward, I should say. Spotting that least in, so that will delay any potential dive. Looks like Moan's going to go ahead and clean up this blue buff. Does get donated over. No steal incoming as Unicorns of Love are actually sending uh, almost everyone here to the top side of the map. Perhaps it's Rift Tail time. Indeed it is. Ananasik is going to go ahead and start that up. Uh, see if Beyond want to contest. They have basically everyone, and Ezreal's making his way up. We'll see if he can make it there in time. 
The young here as well can maybe get some poke happening over the wall. Only tags boss. And uh, oh, they're actually trying to pick off the level 6 MF here. That's a pretty good target. Nice. Great stun there out of the Syndra. Ulti oh. up and exhaust is good, but it's not enough as Husha gets the kill anyway. And now actually the Herald, maybe still something they can take. Yeah, Ananasic does have smite, but this Herald's not that low. They tag the over the second time, and somehow Husha steals it. It's an absolute tragedy right now for Unicorns of Love as Ananasic is going to pay the extra price going down as well. Well, it's a disaster so far. They leash the <laughs> Rift Herald for Beyond Gaming. Argonaut gets picked off in the rotation over there the uh you know exhaust looking good for a second they're keeping it alive in the 1v1 but again the problem is this is not a 1v1 game and you have husha realizing hey i have a target here i can finish before retargeting onto the the rift herald and so uh you know this exhaust starting to look a little uh sussy baka to me yeah it's one thing <laughs> to get caught in transition like that i mean that's just not a place mf can stand and unfortunately stood in the wrong place and got killed for it but losing the rift herald on top of that's a real punishment because at least if two people are peeled off to kill your ad surely you get the rift herald mark c instead it is the worst of both worlds which you hate to see here is again exhaust uh, only chasing safety for a little now, bit here. am i picking on the exhaust a little bit maybe like this heal save you there without your flash maybe not still yeah. but uh you know it, it is a tough position just not having any vision in the river to know if you're safe to rotate over and i don't even know if i feel confident blaming argonaut just for that because it could be the rest of you being like hey come over here and it's like well i'm mf i need to be behind my front line to shoot bullet time and so he's trying to get up there to support his team in that play without having proper vision control set up and so he doesn't know what he's walking through um you know you probably could have known that Sindra isn't seen elsewhere she's a mid laner probably in the river somewhere but you know it's tough when you have so many of these things you're trying to juggle and so Argonaut gets picked off and then the four man doesn't complete their job of getting the Rift Herald and like you said with the CS leads that are already going on the Rift Herald now in their pocket Beyond Gaming is looking like they are in a very strong position. Yeah this lead's absurd actually ten and a half minutes through and they're three thousand gold ahead and that is probably not getting any better I mean there's not even that many plates being taken it's actually only two Zero in mid and one apiece in top and bot. So there is a ton of extra gold to cash in for with this Rift Herald that Husha stole away. There is the continued CS leads that they can build. There is maybe more uh, pressure that can be applied as Husha is actually going for the maximum here, trying to gank boss here alongside Leong. Ananasic is in the area, so it will be a 2v2 if it develops. But uh, if this goes bad for Unicorns of Love, this gold lead is just going to spiral completely out of control. Yeah, I kind of like this read by, by Husha, even though they haven't done it yet. I think that was more of a counter gank opportunity than trying to make his own play. Plus, he has the Rift Herald up there. Uh, so they were trying to bait that. Doesn't quite work around. And then they spot Lee on that pink ward, so they knew he was up there. Starting to get a little prolonged with this play. Either you got to get the push so you can get the Rift Herald off, or you got to go somewhere else at this point. Kino actually fainting to the top side should give you the room you need to push this in. Leon Lo just has to gonna hit the minions a little bit harder. He didn't have a form there, you know, hammering away, but he's gonna finally get it up. Who's just gonna reveal himself? And Kino is actually gonna take the recall, which I do like, although surveillance system is not gonna spot Silas roaming up to the top side, but looks like a ward spotted him instead. So they're gonna have to back away here after taking a decent chunk of plates off. So not the whole tower that they might have wanted with Kino being up there, but good enough, I think, for the first Rift Herald. The nice thing is too with all that pressure that you're putting down the top side is you're getting a 1v1 for Doggo in the bot lane. And so I just saw him on the minimap shift forward aggressively onto Argonaut there, gets a good trade. Argonaut tries to answer back with the ultimate, but my, I have a much shorter cooldown on my E than you have on your bullet time, and I expect Doggo to keep trying to make uh, these kinds of plays, though. Dragon is now the focus. Yeah, typically, you know, Ezreal, not that hot in a 1v1. MF is actually pretty good uh, in any sort of AD carry duel. Uh, the difference being that you're 30 CS behind and the enemy has Divine Sunder finished already, which doesn't really matter what's happening there. I swear to God, if Doggo had stolen that dragon. Oh, God, not so you just throw his keyboard out the window. What's the point? Uh, you know, for the flip side, Beyond just says, we don't really care about you getting a Mountain Dragon when our Jace is snowballing up 30 CS, like you already said about the bot lane, same situation. Uh, I think it's the right decision. You know, if, if you all want to commit the resources to grab a, a Mountain Dragon, go for it. We'll keep the gold lead. Santa's actually trying to freeze that wave in the face of Doggo is pretty bold, but looks like he's getting away with it for now, although eating a little bit of poke, and I think that wave has finally made its way to the turret. Indeed it has. Who should also be busy clearing out this vision here, making sure they can retake all these different areas and have all the mobility for their Syndra. Moen's actually been pretty active so far, and uh, they do want to try and lean down here for Doggo now that Liang has taken out the top lane outer tower. Definitely want to try and get a few more plates if they can in the next 30 seconds, but more than anything, just, you know, you're opening up the map, start moving your pieces around and maximizing your farm.
Yeah, good job by Beyond trying to get some pressure down the bot lane there. Didn't end up turning into a kill, but you, you did all the right steps. You cleared vision in the river. You half rotated Moan down. You, you read the situation. Haven't landed enough pre pre poke from the Ezreal. Call the dive off. I mean, these are the kinds of plays I really like to watch teams try and make. It's these like half plays, these half roams, half decisions where you're option selecting. Yep. Like, okay, we didn't land the poke. Let's go back and we'll go back to normal laning. If you land the poke, great. You actually move the, the rest of your team down and you force that dive. So far, so good. And again, that gold lead still ticking up. 4,000 gold ahead now for Beyond Gaming. See just how big of a lead they can build here as uh, second Rift Herald is going to be available in a little bit. But not just yet. Might be good for another tower here. Although I think Beyond Gaming are pretty happy with the pace of this game. No need to, you know, put your foot completely down on the gas and just go for broke. Because they feel very far in control of this game. I mean, Moan's casually taking the blue buff, who's just following up a storm. Doggo's throwing cues at everything that moves. It's just a good time. Yeah, and honestly, it's it's not like you really get outscaled either. I don't... I mean, you're already 4,000 gold up, so yeah. you're in a great spot. But it's also not like, a, oh my god, we got to keep the gas down. How do we get this mid turret? How do we get bot turret broken open? You know, like, your team comp still plays pretty well throughout the mid to late game. I think, you know, you could argue UOL does scale maybe a little bit harder in 5v5s um, with some of the, the tools that Wukong might have and the MF might have in, in, in terms of pure straight to back, front, front to back 5v5. But 4,000 gold lead and a pretty solid team comp yourself, you know, like, you can actually play this one out relatively slowly. I would not want to see them lose this one uh, I mean, they are saying bot lane again, keeping Doggo down there, so another trade by Beyond, but this one I feel like, okay, you're actually giving them something, whereas the, the Mountain Dragon is a little bit easier to defend. Yeah, this Herald uh, definitely nice, uh, as it represents a potential future investment of gold on the tower, and of course, that opening up the map view definitely gives you a lot more space to play with. Kino is going to find boss here, but Wukong is pretty threatening to the level 7 Rakan, and Doggo is a little low on mana, so doesn't really feel like dueling even in the 2v1 maybe suspect someone else is coming along we know that's not the case but doggo is gonna play jungle here instead which is a much better prize the blue buff always something you want on Ezreal if you can afford to give it over I feel a little bad for boss here uh, the counter pick largely went how you think the early laning phase should go maybe fell a little bit further behind than you'd want but there was a disaster kind of going on the bot lane some of the other parts of the map and so you can't get the jungler attention that you picked this champion for if you're not gonna play around the Wukong with your Lee Sin it's not really gonna do that much. I think Beyond did have some good windows where you saw Husha, you know, camping topside in case that gank did come through. I think Beyond did a good job trying to play around that, but it's just unfortunate for boss now. You have your items completed, and that's the one nice thing is that Wukong is not just a lane counter. He is very good through all portions of the game. It is a fairly physical damage heavy team comp, and when Wukong gets his ult up, he gets so many stacks so quickly. The regen that comes through, the, the actu actual armor that you get from that passive will make it pretty annoying for the rest of Beyond to try and kill him, uh, but luckily, Beyond has a ton of extra gold. Yeah, and Doggo is about to Take that gold investment and run with it here. He's very close to transforming this Muramana. Does have the blue buff ticking away. He's trying to get that poke happening. He's going to sit mid now for uh, about as long as he needs to to take out this tower unless his team demands he come over for an objective. But again, Baron not a thing for a few minutes. Not something you want to take at 20 anyway. Not really caring too much about the dragon. Beyond have definitely favored the farm and the towers right now because they want to keep that gold lead nice and high. And uh, Doggo is obviously, you know, public enemy number one here for Unicorns of Love, but pretty tough to kill the CS with his team behind him. And uh, Boss actually going to get spotted on the flank. Again, nice surveillance here for Beyond Gaming, kind of keeping their lead intact with, you know, good fundamentals and good vision control. Yeah, double pink wards in both the side lane brushes uh, around mid so that they can't find a flank opportunity. Boss is trying his best now around the Raptor pit, um, but it's really hard to find an angle. Here's No Man's, though. No Man's maybe is the one to make it happen. Bullet time already go up down, but Argonaut getting absolutely ripped to pieces by the poke onto that tower. And No Man's going to get spotted, so Beyond Gaming just going to rotate down. And you know what? There is a Dragon to take, but I think they're much happier trying to keep sieging this mid tower, because what do Unicorns of Love have here? They don't have anything after the, the bolt time went down. They were trying to land some pre-fight poke with the bolt time as well as clear the wave, and then you have the flanks come in from the pincer move, but it just kind of fell apart because the vision control was so good, it was so telegraphed.
Ooh, this is a, maybe a bit of a pinch here, but Don't Get Me are going to keep sticking together. Harold dropped in the mid lane here to try and get some counter play, but Beyond Gaming actually fancy Ananasic as their target here as Boss continues to eat Poke to the face. Cinder stuns very nice there. Boss going to get on leash up, but Doggo getting out of dodge there. Husha diving in, and now it's a 2v3 in the back line, and they're just getting decimated on Unicorns alone, but they will trade it back and forth there as Moan is going to fall on the other side. Argonaut still alive for a little while longer, lives to tell the tale, but Doggo flashes in for the max range. Q and he wants blood. Nomad's gonna be the next one on the chopping oh block God. and reads every single juke for the triple kill. Doggo's skill shot accuracy on this Ezreal man. He's got aimbot unlocked, chasing down the kills there after a pretty scrappy fight. Uh, UOL did make that a little bit closer than I thought they'd be able to, given how the fight started with how much pre-fight poke there was, as well as how far they are behind in the game. And you can see the potential of their comp, but Doggo's too clean. That was really slick. Even gonna take the dragon at the end of it as well. As Doggo, let's ah, watch it again. Count the cues, the favorite game to play with Ezreal on replays. Uh, we'll have to see how many does land. Kino there, going onto an Anasik, draws a lot of attention. Uh, and despite the fact that they get a lot of poke onto boss, makes it uh, look like it's going to be an easy win for Beyond Gaming. But you can see the Wukong's power there, working in, finding these knockups, hitting people, Silas as well, stealing these ultimates. Um, I got distracted from watching my own gameplay. Uh, but <laughs> at least towards the end of the fight, I didn't see Doggo miss anything. This one here, I mean, just, ooh. I love uh, that. And even before that fight, like, on the top side of the map, when they were sieging a while ago, ooh. <laughs> that's what you need to know about that replay. He's, that, that's a, god damn that is real clean, <laughs> struggling. Um, but yeah, Doggo was doing a really good job even before that, landing poke to, on the MF and stuff like that, so. He, he's looking real good right now. Yeah, I get why they keep picking the champion, I guess, you know? Uh, Especially Doggo. if the enemy's gonna throw three bands at him and that's what you're getting out of it, you know? That is, is a, a big threat for teams to go that forward is in this. an absurd, oh my god. I was like, is that CSD real? That can't be real. And uh, it is real, plus 72. That graphic showed, and it's keep it's live, so it keeps getting updated. Two hundred and twenty-five CS at twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. This is like the old school numbers mid laners used to get when they were doing the wraith camp farming. Mm -hmm. You remember that crap where they'd steal all your junglers yep. and go to the other guys? That is some insane numbers for an Ezreal. All right, well, Syndra, how do you get out of this one? In a one v three, soon to be a one v four. Santa's the target. Is gonna get killed. Leung swoops in to get it. Now Kino looking to line them up as Doggo finds Boss with a bit of the true shot barrage. Not enough to get the kill just yet, but Husha is closing the trap. No man so on the wraparound is trying to make it happen. Leung gets one, but he gets traded back and forth. Now the bullet time is gonna zone out the rest of Beyond Gaming, and they don't have it just yet, but Unicorns of Love need to leave the scene of the crime now, and that is uh, easier said than done. Boss is low, Argonaut is just about dead. As Wind becomes Lightning, we'll finish off the tail end of that kill, and Doggo Gonna pick up the Silas here as Boss is the only one left alive, and thankfully Wukong will live to tell the tale of how four of his team dove and died. A good attempt by Unicorns of Love to stay active in the game, and you ask how Moan gets out of the situation, he gets out in a body bag. <laughs> um, but the rest of Beyond Gaming were able to collapse quite nicely, and it looks like they're gonna be able to grab the Baron on the back end of this. Santos is the only one in the area, no teleports. I guess Boss has his teleport up. If you can get a ward down, maybe they can stop this, but. Doesn't look like they want to go for it. Yeah. Altless, flashless, Nautilus. Altless, flashless, Wukong being able to yeah. join in. Yeah, it doesn't mm. sound like a fight you win. Don't think so. So let's just win again. So, like I said, initially like to play, finding these kills, and Boss and Anonisic have some nice footwork here to make this a little bit more difficult. Um, and the only problem is it just takes too long. You know, here he's dodging the Husha, W over the wall. He's kind of doing a good job reading all this. The rest of you old corners of love run through the turret to try and get them out. This is a nice zoning ultimate uh, from Argonaut to make sure that they can maybe get back to the turret. But Husha has a really clean re-engage here, uh, going for the alt W to clear the path onto boss, getting onto Argonaut as well. And while boss does get out, it also splits um, no man's there to stay it's trapped under the turret. So nice job by Beyond Gaming reacting to that play, picking up all the kills in the Baron. And Doggo continues to get richer here in this game. 5-0-1, three items completed, stopwatch ready, and a Rebel Baron power play to top it all off. Beyond Gaming looking to put the finishing touches on this game by the looks of things. They are way too close to 10,000 gold ahead given the time <laughs> in this game. It's only 23 minutes or just under, but Beyond Gaming are just unbelievably ahead in this game. And Boss is feeling the pain. The clone's getting shot. The real Wukong's getting shot. Doggo's terrorizing everyone. Doggo's a nightmare. Uh, he is super aggressive, taking blast cones over the wall behind oh. turret, shifting forward. 
This man has too much confidence. And uh, four people in the mid lane is going to make sure he stays nice and safe. Leon's going to finish up to T2 in bottom lane as the mid one falls. And Ananasik is on quite the adventure, uh, but is going to be spotted by just about every war in existence. He is on a safari mission. Unfortunately, he is now, uh, I guess, the prey. <laughs> Dead spotted by Husha briefly. Doggo dominating just deletes Santas from the game. And oh my goodness, that true shot barrage did a lot to Argonaut. And uh, Moan's busy fighting a couple, but not going to matter as he finishes off one and the others are going to get grabbed. And now Husha once again with the re-engage as everyone's been poked down low. And Doggo is continuing his reign of terror. Misses a Q finally on camera. And an Arsic with some nice footwork to get out alive. But unfortunately, the structures will not be so lucky. Nope, looking like it's going to be both mid and bot inhibitor here. We'll see if Beyond Gaming want to try and push for the end. They seem like the kind of team that would be down to scrap it out, especially if they can find another pickoff here. Um, they're super far ahead, looking like they're going to find their first win in group stage of plans. We wonder why we kept tearing. Oh, it's, it's Doggo's team. It's a Doggo-centric team. Finally kind of realizing some of that we saw when he was subbed in for PSG. Blast International, this lockup is nice though. Everfrost here. Out of the sauce to find two with the root, but not enough to get a kill as Doggo's going godlike, still shifting forward. There is Boss finally slays one, gets Kino as Husha on the back end, takes out No Man's True Shot Barrage back up, of course it is. It's been long enough here as Boss once again is going to go back in onto the Xin Zhao, but that's not going to be enough for a kill. Leung's going to finish one up, Boss is going to get finished up as well, and it is only MF left to die to Doggo, this time going to escape. He decides he prefers creeps over killing MF. I am positive he just kind of like kept running at an angle. He could have come. Oh, whatever. He gets both. <laughs> what am I saying? Doggo, of course, is going to get both. Melee, the kill Ezreal, on. shifting in, getting the ace. And now we're back for more. Santos is like, I don't know what round this is. I'm out of here. I don't think I like this experience. And Beyond Gaming are going to make sure it ends quickly, at least, as they will take down the Unicorns of Love to pick up their first win of Worlds 2021. They are on the board. It had to have been a difficult start to the day after their loss to Cloud9, but you can see the power of Beyond Gaming when they're in form. Doggo creating leads in the bot lane that the rest of the team capitalizes on. Leong winning his lane. Uh, the rest of the team playing around them well. Husha exploiting these advantages quite well himself, um, comboing well in the team fights. They're a pretty well balanced team if they can find their footing in the early game. Yeah, definitely uh, more of what we expected, I suppose, and good to see them on the board. We'll have to see how the results shake out. They only have one game left to play. That is, of course, true for both these teams. And for the Unicorns of Love, down but not out. But 03 cannot feel good in a five-team group stage. No, know? and I don't believe they're eliminated yet. Uh, if Beyond goes one and three, Unicorns Love pick up their next one. It's not broken by head-to-head, -head, so they'll probably I think they have to play a tiebreaker, but it still is not a very fun position to be in. And I believe they have Cloud9 next, if I'm not mistaken. So not an easy one to try yes, and pick up your win. That, for, is the, for, that is their team left to play. Yeah. Uh, they will not play the next game. They'll actually be Cloud9 playing Galatasaray, which should be really fun. And uh, once again, like the group feels like it could potentially be in disarray, especially if C9 lose here. Uh, it's just going to be, you know, hands in the air, probably play 1,200 tiebreakers. And uh, I don't know, we'll have a fun time. Sounds good to me. Can't wait. All right, we'll see if Cloud9 can remain undefeated off Galatasaray. I'm going to grab that. We don't go too far. We're off to a break. We'll be back shortly with more Worlds. Make or break. Make it yours. Oh. Oh, yes, the king of the jungle. Time for a quick Red Bull? Red Bull? But you still won't be quicker than the lion. I don't have to be quicker than the lion. Just quicker than you. Red Bull gives you wings.
Make or break. Make it yours. Welcome back to the State Farm Analyst Desk, where Beyond Gaming have come alive in this tournament by picking up their first win against Unicorns of Love. And Goldberg, I'm going to come to you first, because while, yes, Doggo did do Doggo things in this game, it felt to me like the victory really came off the back of the solo laners doing exactly what you asked them to do. It's finally like there was a team around Doggo this time around, and I feel like the game just become easier once you have a mid lane with pressure that can, you know, come together with a jungler and then move down towards the bottom lane and play for your AD carry. So yes, that did actually help quite a lot. It wasn't just a mid lane though, it was also Liang up towards the top side with the Jace, getting resources into him with the Rift Herald all of a sudden, and you have a top laner that's ahead. You know what, that also helps the map. That helps the entire team. It was great to finally not only you see Doggo, but beyond gaming. Exactly. Liang did a lot of work on that Jace up in the top lane, but an important note for everybody that this is actually the first win on Syndra for Moen in the mid lane, career wide. So, so oh. Kaizen, kind of an interesting pick to have been 0-4 on the pick coming into this game, but still to have the confidence to pull off plays like this, pushing in and roaming to the bot lane. Yeah, and what a time to decide to get your first career win on Syndra. I, I thought Mountain played for him great. He was uh, the, the best supporting player here. Kodago was clearly the star. But his stuns uh, multiple times throughout this game, you know, in this clip to an extent, and uh, right here, picking out the MF completely changed the complexion of this fight to a point where now, instead of this being a skirmish around Herald, it's a complete rout. UOL, they already gotten Herald low enough that they feel like they have to commit to at least trying to get something out of this skirmish. And now they get caught out and give away additional kills, all set up off the back of MF getting picked out there so this is exactly what Goldberg was talking about before this game what he really wanted to see was a solo step up and they absolutely did that but it also brought it back to the contrast that we created here before the game actually came into it so we finally had the solo laner stepping up but for unicorns of love Argonaut unfortunately being the one on the receiving and being the one being outperformed once again so unicorns of love no longer having their own destiny in their hand right we don't have tiebreakers but they need to count on beyond to lose the next game and them then winning the next game and that's still a tough task to ask for unicorns of love that's still looking a bit shaky so the early game was all about the setup by the solo laners putting doggo in a fabulous position let's go ahead and take a look at a dragon fight though where he is unlocked to do the thing that we know him to do a triple kill for the adc kaizen yeah, and the key word here is unlocked, right? You can see Kino and Liang first zoning off the Lee Sin so Doggo can just focus on dealing damage. And then at this point, it's basically free reign for him because now he knows there's no one on his flank that he has to worry about. The Wukong is firmly in front of him, so it's just a matter of cleanup duty for him. And then this is where Doggo shines. When you put him in a position where he is unlocked and he just has to focus on mechanics, you can count on him to carry. You don't miss. You don't miss Even in those she pivotal was situations. Just there like, what is happening? <laughs> I know, right? You're like, oh, I've definitely got the fancy feet. Oh, no, he found me <laughs> regardless. Uh, and so a fabulous win put on the board for Beyond Gaming and very much a boon to their chances in this group. But I also think it's important for us to take a step back and kind of evaluate where all the teams stand. For Unicorns of Love, while down, they are not out. Sitting at 0-3 Goldberg, mathematically, they still have options to force that tiebreaker. Exactly. So they need to win their own game. Even then, the destiny is still not in their own hand. They need to count on Beyond Gaming to actually lose. And that's why this game was so pivotal because, as I mean, we re reiterated it so many times, let's just do it one more time. It's no longer in their own hands. They need to count on Beyond to lose. Well, we'll see if they can do just that. But we've only got one more game to close out day two here in play -ins, and it's Cloud9 uh, coming up next. Make or break. Make it yours.